What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn to build a onboarding experience from scratch in SwiftUI. So here's what we're going to build. You open up the app, you've got a pretty standard onboarding flow here. We'll talk about, you know, how to customize each of these pages in a reusable fashion and you can even go ahead and dismiss it once you get to the last page here. We'll talk about bindings and all that good stuff. And most importantly, when you open up the app again, it actually persists the fact that you have been onboarded already so we don't bug our user over and over again so if that all sounds good get started by destroying the like button down below helps a lot subscribe to the channel if you're new and into ios that said let's get into the video all right we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up xcode and creating a new project we're gonna stick with the app template under ios and let's go ahead and give this project a name of onboarding ui make sure your language is set to swift and both your lifecycle and interface are set to swift ui Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop here. And first things first, let's go ahead and close this right panel. Let me expand our Xcode window. And we can also go ahead and change our preview device to something a little more interesting, like a 12 Pro Max. And you can go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side to load up our preview in our canvas area. So cool, looking pretty good. So basically what we want to do is we're going to build out our onboarding view as well as a mechanism to, you know, persist it, uh, aka once it's shown and dismissed, not show it again. So we already have this default hello world here. I'm just going to change this text here and say, you are in the main app now with maybe an exclamation mark. We can potentially wrap this also inside of a navigation view. And let's go ahead and just give this a uh, nested, let's nest this inside of a vertical stack like that, just to build out a bit of an interface that's going to show, you know, once we've dismissed the onboarding view. So we'll go ahead and give it a title as well. I'll just go ahead and call it home. So how do we actually create a uh, onboarding view that shows up modally on top of the main app? Well, first and foremost, we need to create another view. So I'm going to go ahead and create it right down here. Let's just go ahead and add a comment and it's going to be a struct which extends view. So I'll go ahead and call it a onboarding view. Pretty simple. It's going to inherit from view and every single view in Swift UI needs its body. So we'll go ahead and create that there. Now, what do we actually want to use to create this onboarding view where we can page aka scroll horizontally between the pages? What we're going to actually leverage here is a tab view. So let's go ahead and create this here. And just to start off with, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and create a couple text labels. Let's also set a background color on these so we can actually see them maybe we'll do uh, something like three or four let's go ahead and highlight and control i to fix that alignment and let's go ahead and just change up these labels and we'll start to run our app to see you know what our starting point is also go ahead and change up these colors so they're all slightly different so if we go ahead and just hit our run button over here, we'll just use a simulator instead of the preview today. It's a little easier to reason with. You'll notice that we'll start on our home UI. Once it decides to load, we're not actually even showing onboarding yet. So we need a way to show onboarding. So we can show it with a modifier. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is first add a state property. And the state property is going to determine whether or not we need to show onboarding. So we're going to say should show onboarding is going to be a bool. And by default, it's going to be true. Now that we have this, what we can go ahead and do is we can use a cover a full screen cover to go ahead and show this modally. So we're going to use the uh, version here with a binding, which is is presented. And then we've got a content here, which should be the view we actually want to show. So we're going to show a uh, on boarding view, which is what we've got down below that we just created. Let's go ahead and drop that in like that and go ahead and give this a run one more time. Let's see if we have any errors. Looks like we do not. Let me go ahead and stop this and give it a run once more. 
and we should see now our actual uh, onboarding screen. So we see we have this text here, and we can't actually swipe between anything just quite yet. Uh, and this is also not really what we want. So first and foremost, how the heck do we get our tab view to allow us to swipe between the pages? Well, there's a modifier where we can supply a tab view style. And what we want is the page style. So there is a page tab view style. Go ahead and supply that and give it a run. And now what you'll notice is we can actually swipe between each of the things in our tab view. And uh, it's working kind of like we want. The next thing that we want to do is actually have something more interesting on each of these pages uh, instead of just this kind of little text label here. So what you can kind of reason about is we're going to use each of these text labels, um, the way that these are positioned, the place of these to show something more interesting. So let's figure out how to do that. So we could use a variety of different UI components. Uh, what I'm going to actually do, or what I recommend you do, is create a reusable component. So I'm going to create a maybe a page view, which is going to extend our view. It's going to have var body sum view. And if we think about this, what do we want our actual each of each of our pages to actually show? Well, it's going to have a vertical stack first and foremost. We probably want a image on it. I'm just going to use a system name of Bell just to get started. We'll uh, make this configurable in a moment. We'll make it resizable. And let's see, that's probably good enough for now. We probably want some padding on it too. And we'll go ahead and also add in a text label with, I don't know, some dummy placeholder text for now. So we'll say push notifications. I'll go ahead and give it a nice font style and I'm going to go ahead and say we want a system style of possibly size 42 and we'll add some padding on this as well just like that and maybe we want a subtitle label so we'll go ahead and say this one is maybe smaller size 30 and I'll go ahead and say this is enable notifications to stay up to date with our app. So that's looking pretty good. Let's also make the color on this a little bit lighter since it's a subtitle. We'll go ahead and say dot foreground color is going to be color. I will go ahead and say in here secondary label. So now that we've got each of these, how do we actually leverage it? So I'm going to replace all of these texts here with uh, our page view. And right now we're just going to copy and paste it. And they're going to all be the same, but we'll make them configurable momentarily. And then we'll also talk about how to you know, persist if uh, this onboarding shows again. So now we go ahead and see this big red view. We see the blue one, the green one, and the orange one. So a couple problems, as we can obviously tell. First and foremost, our bell is obnoxiously big. So that's not what we want to do. We want our bell to be smaller, and we also want it to go ahead and have an aspect ratio to fit so it doesn't actually look like it's uh, stretched out. So we'll go ahead and say fit. And I'll also go ahead and supply a frame on here, possibly 150 width and a 150 height. Now, I also think our label sizes might have gotten a little too large here. We think we got a little carried away. So let's go ahead and change this to be 32, and we'll keep uh, this one at maybe 20, 24. Let's go ahead and give that a run, and let's see what that looks like now. All right, looking much better. So we've got a bell, we've got a uh, nice title here, a larger label, and then a subtitle. Now we probably want the subtitle to be uh, aligned in the middle, just like all of our other stuff. But this is starting to look pretty good. We do need to get rid of the weird background color. And we also want a button to show uh, on this last green UI here to allow us to dismiss this whole onboarding experience since we can't just swipe it away. So let's go ahead and uh, center align both of these labels. We'll go ahead and say uh, multi uh, line, multi line text alignment. We're going to go ahead and say is going to be centered. And let's go ahead and make uh, this view configurable since we've kind of hard coded things right now. So what do we actually need to pass in here? Well, we want to pass in some text. I can actually probably go ahead and call it a title. We also want to pass in a uh, message you can call this you know a subtitle as well it's kind of up to you and then we also want to pass in a image name and once we have all of these things we can actually replace all of this stuff in here so our title will go here 
our subtitle will go there. I'll go ahead and rename this to subtitle, pretty good, and our image will go here. And now you'll see that we have errors up here because we need to actually supply all those parameters. So let's go ahead and do that one by one. I'm just gonna go ahead and line break all of these so they're nice and clean and organized. And let's see, the first one, we're gonna stick with our bell image. We'll stick with our push notifications title, and this is going to be enable notifications to stay up to date with friends. And then I'll go ahead and copy and paste this, and we can uh, adjust it as we need to. I'll also start to go ahead and drop the background color. And in fact, what we can probably do is let's just delete all of this jazz right here, and let's just copy and paste this here, maybe a total of four times. So it's two, and three, and four. And let's go ahead and change this. So this next one will be maybe bookmarks. We'll go ahead and do that there. We'll change the icon here to be bookmark. And here I'll go ahead and say, uh, save your favorite pieces of content. Next one perhaps will be, I don't know, flights. I'm basically making these up on random as I go for the images I remember. So I'll go ahead and say, book flights to the places you want to go. And then finally for this last one, we'll go ahead and uh, make this perhaps a a home, this will be a house, and we'll go ahead and say, go home wherever you might be. And this should be looking pretty good now. So that allows us to configure our onboarding with each of these page views, and these should all reflect differently now. So looking pretty good. The next thing that we want to do in here is we want to have a way to dismiss our actual uh, onboarding once we get here and tap, you know, maybe a you know finish button. So how do we do that? So what we could go ahead and do is we can add another property in here, and this is going to be shows uh, dismiss button. And we can go ahead and say it is going to be a bool, and we'll go ahead and supply it here. So on our last page, we'll go ahead and say it's going to be true. And on all the other pages, all the prior ones, anything that's not the last one, we can go ahead and say it's going to be false. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it like that. Now that we've got this uh, actually in here, what we could go ahead and do is we can say if uh, shows our actual dismiss button, we want to go ahead and show a button in here with a action and a relevant view for the label here. So I'll go ahead and call it perhaps get started. Also go ahead and give it a frame with a width of perhaps 200. And we'll go ahead and give it a height as well of maybe 50. We want this to look a little nicer, so we'll go ahead and give it a nice background color and a foreground color of let's say color dot white. Also go ahead and bold this text, and then finally we'll give it a corner radius of six. So now when we go ahead and give this a run, we expect to see a green colored get started button on the last screen here, which in fact we do. Now we tap on it, something obviously should happen, which is not uh, the case at the moment. So let's talk about how to deal with that. So we already have this uh, state all the way up here in our content view for should display onboarding. What we basically want to do is we want to pass it down to that page as a binding. So what we can do in our onboarding here uh, is on our onboarding view is create a binding uh, and it's going to be the same name and it's gonna be of type bool, and now what we can do in here is actually pass this uh, down to our onboarding view. So now that we've got it in our onboarding view, we wanna further pass it down to uh, our page view for each of these. So I'm just gonna copy this again, and we're gonna drop it in just like that, and we'll just copy and paste this. It's gonna yell at us because we haven't updated the page view yet. We'll do that momentarily. To update the page view, we'll just grab this thing right here, and we'll actually paste it right here. So now, this view also takes in a binding after the properties. Now, what the heck is the point of passing this binding all the way down? The cool thing about this is, is we can actually toggle this when we hit the button. So we can say, should show onboarding, and we're going to go ahead and say toggle. And now, before I kind of explain it a little more, let's go ahead and give it a run. And what you'll notice is, when I come in here and tap on the button, 
in, boom, it's gone ahead and dismissed. So it's working and looking pretty good now, but there is one more thing that we want to clean up, and that is the fact that this continues to pop up every time we open the app again, and that's certainly not what we want. So how do we persist it? So there's actually a property wrapper you could use called App Storage. And App Storage allows you to save this uh, Boolean in user default. So we go ahead and provide it a string key with a default value, which is going to be true. And actually, when we go ahead and actually toggle that value via the button tap here, it'll actually persist it. So by default, when the app opens, it's true. When I tap on it, it disappeared. But watch what happens when I run the app again. You'll notice that it won't pop up this time. And the reason it won't pop up is because the app storage property wrapper here actually takes care of persisting the bool into user defaults. And uh, let's take a look at this in dark mode. So I'll just go ahead and prefix this with maybe an underscore so the key has changed. And while we're at it, let's actually go ahead and clean some of this stuff up. I'll take our onboarding view in our uh, page view. I'll go ahead and create a new file here. We'll maybe go ahead and create a Swift file. So it's always good practice to abstract this stuff into their own files and refactor it out, especially as your app gets larger, it turns into quite a mess. So don't forget to do that. I'll go ahead and import Swift UI and just give it a paste. And now we see this again. If I change it to dark mode, you see it still looks pretty darn cool. And we have our button here. And the last piece I'll leave you guys with is these views are rather simple. We just have labels and an image. But of course, you can do whatever you want on here. You can have images, uh, multiple images, videos, a background color. You can get pretty uh, creative with it. And I super encourage you to do so because this is honestly one of the first things the user will see once they come into your app. So you want to start with a good impression. So that's how you create an onboarding view in Swift UI from scratch. You don't need to bring in a library for this. It's pretty simple. Also pretty beneficial if you're uh, new to Swift UI and you're just learning the ropes. So if you found the video useful and haven't done so already, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and into iOS and Swift. And definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're working with Swift UI. What do you think? What video do you want to see? What are you guys into? Always love hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.